The Cannondale Synapse has been a staple for endurance cyclists for the past 15 years. Now, as the American brand unveils its fifth iteration of the bike, we're going to delve deeper into the changes and see if it's still worthy of the name. Now, I've been joined by the lucky man who got to test this icon. Simon, tell me, what are the top line figures and how does this compare to the previous model? Okay, so basically this bike is designed to incorporate what Cannondale is calling smart sense technology. And what that is, is it's an intelligent system of lights and radar that communicates with the rider and the surroundings to make them safer. Uh, you've got the front light here, which is wired to this battery just here. Yeah. The rear light is also wired to the battery and you've got radar incorporated into the rear light just here. So what you do is you can use it via the Cannondale app. You download the Cannondale app and you pair it with the bike. And from there you can configure all your settings. Fantastic. And is this a platform that we might see across other Cannondale bikes in the future? Well, it is Cannondale are saying that this is just the first. And um, from here on, other Cannondale models are going to incorporate some sort of level of smart sense technology. But this is where it starts with this bike. Fantastic. And who makes the radar system? Um, the radar system is Garmin Varia. Yep. And the lights are made by Lazine. So two really trusted platforms then. Exactly, exactly. So Simon, how bright are the lights? The front light is 350 lumens okay. and it's actually it doesn't sound like a, a massive lumen count, but it's actually bright enough to see as well as be seen. The rear light is 85 lumens and it can flash. Uh, you can configure it via the app. Okay, and do, can it also work as a brake light as well? It does work as a brake light too, yes it does. And, uh, and it, it also changes brightness according to the traffic. So it gets brighter um, as a car approaches and dims back again once, once the car's gone past. What's the running time like with, with that whole system then? If it's obviously running off one battery, um, how long is that really gonna last in, in the real world? Cannondale are quoting just under four hours, so like 3.45 is the figure they're saying. Uh, that's pretty, pretty accurate, pretty much spot so that on. That shapes up yeah. pretty well. Yeah, okay, nice less. one. Okay, fantastic. Now I can see you've got your Wahoo up on the top here. How does the SmartSense system integrate with that display? But you've got three display options. You can basically use a standard head unit, which is compatible. Wahoo is compatible, even though it's a Garmin radar system. Yeah. It also comes with a Garmin Varia head unit, which is like a little strip uh, of LEDs. Uh, that's, that comes as standard. And the third display option is you can just use a smartphone and use a smartphone mount. And you can see all the settings on there. You can see battery yeah. life, um, how much of your battery is left. Sure. Um, I mean, the great thing is you've got multiple different options depending on one, how you're going to be using the bike, but also what you've actually got available to use yourself. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly cool. that. Now I can see that that battery is mounted down by the bottom bracket. Now, of course, that's feeding the lights, the Garmin radar system. How easy and convenient is that to then recharge? It is so easy, it's so easy. All you do is you can just unclip it from the down tube there charge it up, it takes three hours to fully charge. Okay. Everything runs off that battery. So Cannondale is saying everything, the whole point of SmartSense is for convenience and confidence. The confidence that you've got those lights and they're on all the time, you can configure them. Yeah. Convenience, you just take off the one battery and you can just charge it up. Just one battery, not messing around with lots of different lights and lots of different wires and USB ports and all the rest of it. I mean, that just sounds ideal really, yeah. Okay, so could you tell me about the entire range kind of and what the different price points are? Yeah, so there are six models in the range. It starts with a Tiagra equipped Carbon 4, which actually is SmartSense ready but doesn't have the SmartSense hardware on it. Um, and it tops out at the Carbon 1 RLE, which is Dura Ace Di2 equipped and fully smart sensed up. What else would you be seeing on that top end bike? Oh, well, it's got the really expensive, nice, really nice carbon wheels. It's got tan wall tires. It's got a integrated bar and stem. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really lovely looking bike. There's a system of lettering that is R, L and E. Yep. R means radar, L lights and E electronic gearing. So obviously the carbon one RLE has all of them. Whereas this one is an RL, uh, which has radar and lights, but mechanical gearing, mechanical Fantastic. Altegra here. Lovely. So what Cannondale are saying is that the new Synapse Carbon is intended to take road cycling right up to the edge of the gravel world. Amazing. So then talk to me about the tyre clearances. What have we got space for? So you've got space for 35s. Okay. This comes with 30s. There are mudguard eyes, so there's enough clearance with mudguards for 30mm tyres. Now obviously we've been reviewing the Carbon version, but 
there's obviously that aluminium frame that they do as well. Are they going to be continuing to make that one? They're continuing to make the aluminium frame. It's staying exactly the same. At the moment, it's not smart sensed. So okay. it's the same one. It's carrying on. At the moment, it's only the carbon line that's been updated. So do you think we'll start to see the aluminium version also get that smart sense technology pretty soon? Yeah, I think they will. And Cannondale did say that in the future, they expect most Cannondale road models to incorporate some element of smart sense compatibility. Who do you think this bike is best suited to? Is it a commuter, gravel bike, endurance bike? Who's it for? It works really well as a road bike. You know, the original designation of the Synapse was as an endurance bike, so you could pretty much ride anything on it, really. They're saying gravel as well. It's got the big tyres, the, the clearance. You could ride gravel on it, but I think probably not too technical, just sort of easy-ish gravel. <laughs> Although the quote was that it's, it's easy to ride hard on all kinds of road. That makes sense. Uh, with this bike, obviously, you can kind of tell from the previous model, we've definitely kind of got those drop seat stays. It looks like it's got a bit more of an aero profile file. Is that something they were thinking about when they were designing this one? Yeah, they, they've said the, it, the frame is subtly aerodynamic. So it's got the drop seat stays. Um, it's quite smooth looking. I mean, I haven't seen any wind tunnel figures. I'm not sure if it's been in the wind tunnel. <laughs> yeah. And um, in terms of um, stiffness and compliance, how is that comparing against the previous model? Okay, so Cannondale say that this new Synapse Carbon is 8% more compliant. So it's a bit more comfortable to ride, in other words. And what about the geometry of the frame? How's that comparing to the previous one? The geometry is exactly the same. Cannondale are really settled on a good geometry that's really gone down well with a lot of people and they haven't messed with it at all, which is, which is good. I can see that this is a 56 centimetre frame. Is that what you'd usually ride? Or with this model, would you opt for one of the other sizes? I do normally ride a 56, but I think with this model, I should have gone for a 54 because the stack height, although it's a 56, the stack height is nearly 60 centimetres. So wow. it's pretty tall at the front. Yeah. It feels like you're riding a big bike. And if you like a more aggressive position, then I think uh, for me, I would go down to a 54. Okay. Uh, I'd have to put something like a 130 stem on. Okay. Which would be your spec slash price point of choice? You know, was that great or would you actually opt for something different in the range? Yeah, I really like Mechanical Altegra. I mean, I'm not a Dura snob. Uh, it works really well for me. I think there's nothing wrong with it. It's really functional. It's a, it's a great group set. So I would be happy to stick with that. What I'm not so keen on is these Fulcrum Rapid Red 900 wheels, which are really gravel wheels. And they're just a bit too heavy, really. With the Vittorio Rubino tyres, I think that really the, the wheels are what's holding this spec back a bit. If you wanted better wheels, you'd have to go right up to the top of the Durace Di2 version or the GRX 800 version. Yeah. And then you'd get the Hologram 45 SL knot wheels, which are really nice wheels, but super expensive. We've spoken about the wheels and how on this particular model, you might want to upgrade them. In terms of the overall weight of the bike, and obviously you can only really comment on the one that you've ridden, how does that feel? How has the weight of this felt? Okay, so the weight's 9.5 kilos, which doesn't sound very light. You've got to factor in the lights and the radar, which adds half a kilo. So you're looking at sort of around about nine kilos. These wheels are very heavy. You're looking at sort of just under two kilos for those wheels. Yeah. So I think it doesn't feel like a lightweight bike to ride. Okay. Um, but I think at the same time, you know that that could be solved. That's it. And I guess with um, a change of wheels and if you weren't running that light radar system, you could be dropping a kilo off the bike. You could be, you could be. But okay. you know, the bike is actually designed for those lights and, and, and the radar. So, of course. Uh, so, so, you're, so you're stuck with them. <laughs> yeah. um, but, th but Cannondale has said actually that those lights and the radar are 35 grams lighter than an equivalent setup, which isn't integrated. So okay. you are saving a little bit of weight there by using the smart sense I guess system. that's helped by the, just the one battery that serves all. Yeah, yeah. With the smart sense system and the cables that are attached to that, is that gonna make it tricky for home mechanics to work on their own bikes? You can just basically uh, leave the smart sense alone. It's a sort of, um, it comes fitted, so it's like a fit and forget. You don't even fit it. The wiring is all internal. Uh, you can just leave it alone. All you've got to do is take the battery out to charge it, uh, and that's it. Simon, final thoughts. What are your key takeaways from this first look? It's a really, really interesting bike, and I just love the way that the lights are here. You know, wherever you go riding, everybody's riding lights these days, you know, whether it's daytime or nighttime, or summer or winter, everybody's using lights. So this is just great. Cannondale's the first big brand to do something like this with one of its most popular road models, and it's also committing to doing it with its other road models in the future. So I think that we're gonna see all the other big brands follow its lead. I think integrated lighting is no longer for e-bikes or concept bikes. 
you know, it's for road bikes that everybody rides, that we all ride. Yeah. And uh, I just, uh, I think it's, it's, it's really, really good. I think it's a, a real, it's a big step forward. So there we have it. That is the brand new Cannondale Synapse first look. If you've got any questions about the bike and want to know a little bit more, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and we'll see you again very soon.